So let's pick up where we left off last time and finish up this portrait. And if you haven't watched last week's video, which was part one, this is about painting advanced parts of a portrait, but trying to simplify them and only paint the impression of what you see. The goal of this painting is to make it look like there's a lot of detail going on without actually painting in micro details like skin pores. So let's move along to the right eye and start mapping in some of the values. The color that I'm using here is a flesh tone that we mixed in last week's video. And the first thing I wanna do is get in the iris and the eyelashes on the upper eyelid. So on the outer part of the iris where the limbus is or the limbal ring, I'm using my shield to just spray in a thin line on the outside there. And then I'm gonna switch over to freehand and spray this all in. The flesh tone that I'm using now is too light of a value. I'm not gonna be able to get it dark enough, but that's kind of a good thing because it kind of gives me room to mess up. You can see as I'm painting this, it's kind of messy. I'm just spraying this in freehand, just trying to darken it up and kind of map everything in place. When I make mistakes, this light paint is so much easier to erase out than a darker color like sepia or black. When you're painting portraits, the majority of values are very soft and there's a smooth transition between everything like the nose, the cheek, the lips, there's nothing really sharp. But the eyes are very different, and that's why I usually like to start by painting them in first. There's a lot of sharp lines and very sharp contours around the eyes. When I'm painting an eye, a shield is absolutely essential. I really need it to help get in these sharp lines. It just makes the painting process so much easier. As I'm working on this lower eyelid, you can see I'm just kind of fitting this curve in and then just lightly spraying over the edge of it, Give me a very sharp transition there. I'm gonna switch over to some freehand here and just kind of darken up this right side. The sclera, which is the whites of the eye, is always gonna get darker as it moves off to the edges. So to the left where it goes to the tear duct and to the right as it rounds away, you just want some darker value in there. So for now, I'm just gonna use that flesh tone and lightly spray it in there. To get in some of these thin lines underneath the eye, I'm using my shield, but take a look where I'm spraying. You'll see that I'm spraying on the shield here. I'm letting some of the overspray from the airbrush get onto the canvas. And you can see that when I remove this, I get a very, very thin line. We'll have to darken this up later, but for now, this should work just fine. I wanna do the same thing above the eye, add some thin lines there, but this time I'm gonna move my shield around a little bit so the line isn't a perfect curve. It kinda of angles off in some different directions. And something I wanna point out, when I'm adding in lines like this, you'll notice that I don't have any paint on this part of the canvas yet. The reason for that is just to give me some room for error. If I make a mistake on any of those lines, it's really easy to erase out and I don't have to worry about any sort of background color coming out with it. And just like the left eye, I'm gonna add the eyelashes in on the right Right one using a black colored pencil. So I'm just laying in some paint down first so I can add these in. If you're having trouble with a colored pencil on canvas, it may be that it's not smooth enough, like you don't have enough layers of gesso on it, you didn't sand it well enough, because if the canvas texture is still down there and you try to draw over it, the lines are gonna look very bumpy and they're not gonna look even. So make sure you get that canvas smooth or use a, a paper or a synthetic paper. So let's move along to the next part, which is gonna be the eyebrow. Now to paint this in, I'm using the same flesh tone and I'm just starting freehand, spraying in some small lines and some small dots. What this is gonna be is kind of like hairs that are in the background. We'll eventually switch over to a colored pencil later on to add some more defined, sharper hairs on top. But for now, this is gonna work well and it just kind of helps put it in place. And you can see I'm just basically going around this, kind of adding some texture where I feel like I'm missing some. I'm using the skin texture template and some freehand, just mixing the two together. If you look at my completed painting on the left side of the screen, you'll see that the light source is kind of strange in this photo. The subject here, she's tilting her head back and the light source is coming straight on. So we're getting a kind of a reflection right in the middle of the cheek, which goes up to the eye. And then you get this really bright area on this eyebrow. And this part was kind of tricky to paint because this highlight or reflection is kind of distorting some of this eyebrow itself where you can't see some of the hairs. Um, so what I did was I basically just came in with my eraser here to try to lighten up this whole area first. And then I came in with the colored pencil on top of it to add a few hairs in there. And you'll see that as I work on this, I'm just kind of switching off between my eraser and the colored pencil, kind of adding some paint and removing it, seeing if I can get this to look like that reference photo. But the reason I'm telling you this is that it's important to have a very good photo reference where the light is the way you want it to be because 
you're going to be painting what you see. And if the light is off or it looks strange in the photograph, it's also going to look the same in the painting. So if you're working on a, a portrait at home, you know, of someone in your family, make sure you take a bunch of photos and really decide, look at them and edit them, maybe in something like Lightroom or Photoshop and decide on the one that you think looks best and is going to be best for you to paint. And for me, one of the most challenging things is trying to paint a good painting from a bad reference photo. So make sure you take time to select the photo that you want. And before we continue on, I just want to say thank you so much to the new members who joined this last week. First was Perichete Arts. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, who joined as a tier one. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Also, I'd like to thank Ken, who joined as a tier one. He donated once before, so very generous if you can. And of course, I also want to thank Pete, who joined as a tier two member. Again, that's also very generous of you. So thank you so much, guys. And of course, thank you so much to Perry, Andrew, M. Shibley, Dwayne, Alex, and Robert. From here, what I'm doing is using some black in the airbrush and darkening up the iris and the eyelashes just above the eye and also into this eyebrow. After I finish that, of course, I switch right back to that flesh tone mixture and uh, I'm just going to come around here and darken up some areas that are just too light and add some texture where I feel like it's needed. I'm following the exact same technique that we talked about in last week's video by adding paint and removing it with the eraser and then just constantly repeating that process over and over until I get uh, some textures that I'm happy and I'm comfortable with. I'm speeding through some of this because you don't need me to narrate every little thing I'm doing. This is going to get too boring. But I just want to point out that I'm only using that flesh tone for every value you see here. The only time I'm switching it is for the iris and the eyebrow and then of course for the part that I'm working on now which is going to be the hair. So the color I'm using in the airbrush is black by Createx Illustration Color. I diluted about 10-15% with some distilled water. And you can see I'm just kind of painting this hair in very soft and kind of messy, just like what we did with the eyebrows. The point of this is to map the hair in place and to have some softer hairs to make it look like there's some depth going on within the hair itself. From here, I'm switching over to an eraser and an X-Acto blade and scratching right into the paint. I want to try to keep these hairs close and tight together. Remember, this painting is about painting the impression, so we're not going for a lot of detail. I'm also going to use a black colored pencil. This is a Prismacolor, and you can see I'm just sketching in some thin, sharp hairs here. And this is kind of like what we did with the eyebrows, where we started with the airbrush to paint in some softer hairs, which are in the background, and then switch over to the colored pencil for some of the sharper lines, which are going to be in the front of it. Just going to give some depth to the hair itself. You could use any type of eraser, including an electric eraser, whatever you're most comfortable with. And you just want to kind of pull out highlights in clumps together. She has curly hair here, so you want to keep each one of these curls kind of tight together. And then once that's erased out, you switch back over to the airbrush and spray over it. When you're painting curly hair, you could basically place the curls wherever you want. But if you look at my completed painting on the left here, you'll notice that each clump of, of curls is basically a highlight that kind of fades over into black. So the way that you do this is you erase out an area that's going to be a curl, a highlighted area, and then you switch back over to that black paint and kind of spray a gradient on each one going from that highlight over to a dark shadow. And for me, the easiest way to do this is always to kind of repeat that process of adding paint, erasing into it, and adding more. So each time you do that, you're layering these textures over each other, building up some depth to the hair. This is definitely not a difficult thing to do, but it takes some time. You can't really rush through this. Since this whole painting is kind of about simplifying the portrait just to paint the impression, what I like to do for the hair is basically just spray down the color black first. That way I have something that I could race right into. I'm not trying to spray in actual individual hairs or highlights first. I'm just laying that down like a solid block of color. So the majority of this hair is actually painted in using the eraser, just scratching into that paint. So on the right side here, this hair is kind of hidden in shadow. So you can see I'm just coming around, adding some random textures, kind of scribbling around with my erasers just to give some uh, subtle scratchy textures into that black paint. And then from there, switch right back over to the airbrush with the black paint in it and lightly glaze it on. You can see that I'm adding some more paint in some areas, some less in the other, just to kind of push this into the background. The goal here is to make this look like hair when the viewer sees it from a distance. Of course, if you look at it up close, 
you'll just notice that it's a bunch of scratches and uh, eraser marks in the paint. I'm going to skip painting the ear and I'm going to make a separate video either next week or the following. I'm going to have two videos that week just to dedicate a whole one on how to paint an ear because I know a lot of people have been struggling with that and I keep getting requests for it. So we'll do that uh, probably next week. So let's move along to the right side of the face and work on this cheek here. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is adding some texture here using a skin texture template that I made myself. If you want to make one of these, I have a video I made about five or six months ago showing you how to do that. With the flesh tone mixture in my airbrush, I'm just working my way around this side of the cheek, spraying a bunch of small dots all around. I'm not trying to spray a lot of paint and I'm constantly moving the shield around. I want these dots and this texture to look random. I don't want a, a pattern or a sequence in it. I'm also aware that this area right here that I've circled on the screen right now is going to be the highlighted area. So I'm trying not to spray as many dots up there. I'm trying to add more of these dots in this texture into the parts that are going to be darker, basically where the shadows are going to be. It's all too easy to get carried away when you're spraying textures like this. So once you get to a level that looks something like this, this generally works well enough for me. So I'm going to switch over to the airbrush freehand now and start adding in these values. On every portrait, you're going to see that there's going to be a highlighted area somewhere on the cheek and then right underneath that, a corresponding shadow. This is because the cheekbone, which is called the zygomatic bone, comes right down here where I have this line across this side of the face. And right above that, it's generally going to catch light and give you a brighter highlight. And below it, we're going to get that darker shadow. So for that lighter area, I'm trying to spray less paint there. And of course, for the darker area, just spraying a bit more. This flesh tone works well to map in these shadows, but the overall color looks a little too orange, too warm now. So we're going to switch over to sepia later, spray that over the top, and that'll help cool these shadows down and then darken them up a little bit more. So let's move on to the last major part of this portrait. And of course, that's going to be the mouth and the lips. The color I'm starting with is sepia. And the reason for that is that I want to get in this dark shadow between the lips here. So you can see I'm using a shield here, placing it over the lower lip and just spraying above it to darken that shadow in. I'm also going to continue using the sepia for some of the darker areas on this upper lip, like the left side here where this is kind of in a cast shadow and just along the lower side of the upper lip. From here, I want to fill in this area between the lips where we have that dark shadow inside the mouth. And you're going to see that I'm going to be using a shield to kind of work my way around the teeth to keep the edge of them sharp. But the main goal here is to fill in this dark shadow. The majority of this is going to be painted in freehand. The only time I'm using the shield is to sharpen up the lines around the teeth. The majority of these teeth are in shadow. There's just kind of two small areas that are catching some light. So as I paint this in now, it's going to look a little strange, but don't worry. We're going to adjust it later. We're going to help darken these in to kind of set them in place. And for any portrait painting, if you're painting a muted dark area, maybe like the nostril or this area of the mouth, the best two colors are sepia and black. Just from my experience, sepia is just a little bit more forgiving because it's a lighter color and you have to spray more of it to get it as dark. Uh, but black works really well, too, if you want a really dark, deep shadow. And of course, sepia is going to be a little bit warmer. It's going to be more toward an orange. And black is going to be cooler. It's going to be more toward blue. From here, what I'm going to do is switch back over to my flesh tone and use this to paint in the lips. Now, I like using a flesh tone to paint in the lips for the first pass just because it helps blend in with the, the skin tones around it. If I just started with a natural lip color like red or a desaturated pink, I'd have to be very careful because if that pink gets on other areas of the portrait, it's going to look strange. Like look at this area right off to the left on the portrait where this cheek is. I don't want red there and I don't want it up here where this highlight is up in the filtrum. So painting the lips with the flesh tone for the first pass kind of gives me some room to screw up, make some mistakes. I don't have to be concerned too much about that overspray because if it gets on the areas around it, you're not even going to notice it because that's the same color anyway. We'll alter the hue of the lips later by glazing a color red over the top of it. But for now, I'm just painting this in using that flesh tone. As I mentioned earlier, the lighting on this portrait is kind of strange. You could see that there's this subtle cast shadow just above the lips. It almost looks like a small mustache or something. It's not. It's just uh, the lips casting a shadow because the light source is straight on kind of below the subject. And we're just getting some weird shadows. And I'm painting this in because this is what I see on the reference and I'm always using that as my guide. We're going to have to add plenty of highlights onto these lips so I'm not spraying it too dark just yet. This is dark enough for now. We'll switch over to the eraser next. So let's move on to the lower lip, 
paint this in with the same flesh tone, and then start erasing out our highlights. For the lower lip, the first thing I want to do is map in this dark cast shadow underneath it. So I'm just coming along with my shield, spraying some thin lines here to kind of set it in place, and then just spraying it in freehand. I want to darken up this left side a little bit more than what I have down now, so I'm just coming in with the same color, spraying it on the left side, using a shield and some freehand, just to give us a darker value. For the lower lip, I'm going to use a ripped piece of paper, and I'm just going to spray a bunch of lines going across here, maybe about 10, starting from the middle, working my way over to the right. To add some variety in these lines, I'm using a curve on an airbrush shield here, just to spray some sharper lines over to the left. Then from there, I'm just going to spray this color right over the top to define the major values of the lips, a little bit darker at the bottom and kind of lighter in the middle where light is hitting it. From here, I'm going to switch over to the eraser and I'm going to pull out highlights to the right of each one of these lines I put in. I'll work on the upper lip first, just sketching out and scratching out some paint. And then I'll move down to the lower lip doing the exact same thing. With the erasing, like everything else, you could switch between this type of eraser and you can use an electric eraser. Whatever you want, you know, either one is probably going to pull out too light, but that's good for this because what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to some scarlet next and glaze that over the top. That's going to help shift the color temperature to more of a reddish color. I'm going to continue adding some textures here. You could use an airbrush needle if you want to pull out very thin lines, or you could use a more aggressive sand eraser like this one right here. That'll give you a rougher texture. From here, I'm switching over to the color scarlet, using it right out of the bottle and lightly spraying this over the lips. You want to make sure you don't spray too much of this and you don't want any of that overspray getting on the actual flesh tones itself. Some of the bright primary colors like scarlet red are very highly saturated. So you just really don't want to spray too much paint. If you spray too much, it's going to look cartoony. The color is going to look way too bright. So a little bit goes a long way. So that's where we're going to wrap up this portrait. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I think a painting like this could be fun to work on once in a while. It just allows you to loosen up and just paint a little bit more freely and not be so concerned with every bit of detail. Remember not to be hard on yourself. Don't worry about making those mistakes because in the long run, they're always going to end up making you a better painter. And here's a photo of the completed painting and natural studio light. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.